Hi everyone, uh, this is a USGS topographic map and I want to give you a brief introduction to it because we're going to be looking at some topographic maps when we do our exercises about scale and uh, calculating area and calculating distances and so forth. This is also, especially if you're in the United States, an extremely popular series of maps. The USGS, the United States Geological Survey, produces a very large number of maps every year. They update uh, their uh, maps every year. Uh, it's a huge undertaking and so they do provide a whole lot of geographic information for uh, all different kinds of uses. And I know lots of people who come in from not only geology, but people who come in uh, to GIS from environmental studies and, and many different applications use uh, topographic maps and uh, all a lot of the information that comes from the geological survey. Now it may seem a little bit strange to you that I'm looking at a paper map here and this is a GIS class, it's a class about technology, but it's really not that strange at all because one, I like to be sure that we understand all of the fundamentals that are going on in an analog in a paper uh, map format before we begin applying the computers to them, but also because uh, there are, these maps are used so often in GIS. There is still a tremendous amount of information that is available in hard copy, historical maps that we may need to scan, we need to, may need to bring in, we may still need to digitize in some way to get into GIS. There is an increasingly amount, uh, amount of this that is already digital. You can download digital versions of the geological survey maps. In fact, the file that is a digital version of a topographic quadrangle like this is called a, a DRG, a digital raster graphic, and you can bring them into GIS. They're geo-referenced. And so you have that with you uh, when you're doing your analysis. So even though uh, it is a hard copy map, we can scan them, we can geo-reference them, we can bring them in and use all of this information that's on it. And actually, I noticed it's becoming increasingly common. The Illinois Geological Survey does this. When they produce one of their maps, they also provide to you, you can get hard copy, but they also provide a digital copy to you, and you can also immediately have access to the data that was used to create the map. They provide that to you in a little, little database, and that's fantastic. So, you know, not only do you get the professionally produced map, but you also can get to the GIS data and do what you want to with it. So, uh, for all those reasons, we should at least take a look at this map. And there is a whole lot that I would really like to be able to say about it. I noticed that uh, when I talk to students about the topographic maps, I know that a lot of them haven't previously had a whole lot of experience with them. And there is so much information that we can get off of them. So from, from a map use standpoint, from a map reading standpoint, that we could really, uh, uh, really spend a lot of time uh, learning how to use topographic maps. Some people who come into GIS class already have an idea. Maybe they are hikers or hunters or other kinds of outdoors people, or they already have experience with topographic maps in uh, some for some other reason. But uh, if you don't, uh, I I'm afraid I'm going to have to save a lot of the really how do you read the topography and uh, a lot of the map use, a lot of the map reading perspective specifically for a USGS topographic map to some other uh, later lesson. But I just want to point out a few key components of this topographic map uh, before we uh, move forward into other things. Uh, first of all, okay, I did say that this is the United States Geological Survey topographic map. I called it a uh, USGS topographic quadrangle, and uh, that word quad means four, and it means four angles, okay? We got one, two, three, four angles uh, on this map. Now, this is not a USGS topographic rectangle. This is not a USGS topographic square. Uh, you can tell it's not square here, but it's not a rectangle either. And so instead we use this more generic term, USGS topographic quadrangle. Well, why do we use this more generic term? Well, because think about the problems that we've been talking about as far as uh, transforming something round on the Earth to something flat like this paper map. Well, this is a section of the Earth, okay? But it's not, this is on something round. This is on the round earth. So a rectangle, a 
uh, square as well are planar figures. They're on something flat. But this cannot be something that is uh, a rectangle because this is something that's curved, that's sitting on the curvature of the Earth. It's a small section of it, but it's still something that is sitting on the curvature of the Earth, and that still matters. So in three dimensions, in spherical geometry, we don't have rectangles, we don't have squares, we have uh, this more generic term for quadrangle. We have the shape and it's got four angles when it's sitting on the uh, surface of the Earth. If you'd like to know exactly where this is positioned, we can find out exactly what lines of latitude are represented by here at the bottom, up here at the top, and then the lines of longitude here on the two sides. This line right here happens to be 39 degrees and 30 minutes north. Okay, 39 degrees, 30 minutes north. This top line is 39 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds uh, north, right up here. On this side, uh, we are at 91 degrees, 7 minutes, 30 seconds. And here we are at 91 minutes, uh, 91 degrees, 15 minutes. And of course, this is uh, west, because this is here in the United States, it's in Missouri. So we're looking at a chunk of the Earth, and those are the coordinates uh, for the corners then, so you can tell for each one of the lines. Now, topographic quadrangle, seven and a half minute series. What does that mean, seven and a half minute series? We're not talking about time here, we're talking about uh, degrees. We take degrees of latitude and longitude, and we break each line of latitude and longitude into 60 minutes. And so then we can actually break each uh, minute of latitude or longitude into 60 seconds. So we use uh, this ter these terms, minutes and seconds, to break up uh, degrees uh, in, in order to determine our position. So when we say this is a seven and a half minute topographic quadrangle, it means that each one of these sides represents seven and a half minutes uh, of, uh, of distance. And you can tell that's exactly what I just called out. Uh, this line right here, across the bottom, this line of latitude, was 39 degrees and 30 minutes north. So if I were to add seven and a half minutes, if I were to go further north, seven and a half minutes, I would end up on this top line of this map, and I do. I am at 39 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds. That's seven and a half minutes of distance going north and south here. Likewise, I'm over here at 91 degrees, seven minutes, 30 seconds west. By the time I get over here, I'm at 91 degrees, 15 minutes. This is also seven and a half minutes worth of distance. So that's why we get seven and a half minute series topographic quadrangle. That's why it's called what it is. Uh, each one of these topographic quadrangles has a name. This one happens to be Ashburn, and this is in uh, Missouri. Oh, it's uh, Missouri, Illinois. Okay, it's, uh, it's both. We can take a look at uh, the quadrangle location right here. So we're on the state line, apparently, with uh, this uh, uh, topographic quadrangle. That's where we are. I also want to point out to you the scale that's down here. We've been talking about scale, and this is a scale that's very famous. I've mentioned it to you before. The scale that the seven and a half minute series topographic quadrangles are made at happens to be one to 24,000. You're gonna see the representative fraction right down here. The scale is one to 24,000. And so I gave you that uh, scale to think about uh, and uh, so why? What is, uh, what is, why would somebody make a scale to uh, 1 to 24,000 or make a map to 1 to 24,000? Well, the uh, people, the uh, cartographers at the Geological Survey did this for a very specific reason. And I bet that if you were to take 1 to 24,000 and you were to perform a conver conversion to a verbal scale, you would uh, be able to figure out why in the United States making a map to a scale of 1 to 24,000 makes a whole lot of sense. 
So try to do that. Make sure that you try to convert 1 to 24,000 to a good verbal scale and see what, uh, what that means for this map. You're also going to notice that uh, we have three different scale bars. So it uses two different ways to communicate scale. It's got the scale bar uh, down here and the representative fraction up here. So there are three scale bars shown on this map. I've got one up here that shows how far one mile is, and then I've got uh, one here that's showing by feet, and then I've got one right here that's showing in kilometers. So trying to help you out, uh, we don't have a verbal scale here, so you're going to have to figure that out for yourself, but we do have the representative fraction and we do have scale bars. I bet that if you were to take your ruler and put it on one of these and take a look at the scale bar, you would be able to figure out what the verbal scale is for this particular map. Well, like I said, this is just an, a brief introduction to this topographic map. We're going to use it to look at scale, to look at uh, how to get distance off of the map, how to use the, uh, the map as far as the scale goes and get comfortable with that. Uh, and then uh, hopefully in some other lesson someday, we will get to uh, how to actually read and uh, pull topographic profiles off of the map and do all kinds of neat topographic stuff. But for now, we'll just uh, leave this introduction the way it is and move on to using the scale uh, in the next lesson.